one of my husband. Uh, I don't see your husband. Oh. I think it's working now. You wanna try again? Really? Can you hear? I can hear you and I can see you. Uh, so then other people, I don't think they can hear me. No, you're loud and clear. I, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear. Good hear. I can hear you. Mm. Oh. Okay, so then we go ahead. It's actually we do it's then post and start. So it looks like we don't hear each other. You he heard that's very good. Then we go to verses 24. Uh, verses 24, Chita Martin. Mary, can you do the this uh, verses 24? I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Okay. If someone with the necessary causal conditions, such as concentration, concentration can see the consciousness of others from afar, therefore it must be possible to clearly behold one's own consciousness, which is so near. And then the Manika says, this is not necessarily so, because although from an application of an eye lotion consecrated by powerful attainments, treasure vases can be seen far beneath the earth, the eye lotion itself, which is much closer, cannot be seen. And um, of course the uh, Chittamantra school is saying that um, uh, the mind is permanent, which is uh, their mistake on it, uh, but it can know itself. And uh, it's sort of another example like light illuminating light. So apparently these mantras or uh, magicians in the old days used to put a lotion in people's eye and allow them to see treasure vases or my note said something like they could, like the Titanic, <laughs> they could, put down little probes and see everything that was in the staterooms of a ship sunk down a mile. We now do it with technology, but before they used um, magic. But even with those, with the lotion in the eye to see these treasure vases, you could not see um, the lotion, which is very close, just like you can't see your own face. So if mind is emptiness, you can say that you can see mind. I think that's what you said. Did you say that? <laughs> if mind yes. is emptiness, you, you is can't empty. see it. You can see it if it's empty, you but can. if it's permanent, you can't see it. Yes, is that it? mind is permanent for you know seeing their own. Yes. That's all I got on that one. I don't know. <laughs> You did a good job. Yeah, so anyone has a question that everyone okay? I have a question. Mm. The, the, you know, we're talk, the, the, the words you're saying, we're looking at, at the, see the consciousness of others from afar. The first word that popped into my mind was, was uh, clairvoyance. So when I start reading about the eye lotion, I got thoroughly confused. I'm still confused because I don't understand how the eye lotion can help you see someone else's consciousness. Oh, so that's the, see the someone used the uh, mantra that's talking about a long time ago, you know, ancient time. So the, not like same as like just like him, right? We have put in the face and the body. They use something medicine and uh, the this translator just says lacun but it's put in close to eye something then the power of that mantra then you can see very far away 
So now think about the technology. Technology use, you know, like telescope or these things can see very far away. Yeah. So but they're, they're close ones, you know, like really their own side cannot see. The same as your eye, you can see far away, but cannot see your your face. Uh, I understand radar and sonar and that kind of stuff, but I don't understand how it relates to consciousness. Mm. So, the yesterday that we talked Chitta Matter in this uh, score, talk about the mind, see the mind. And then my Amiga say mind cannot see mind. So, they give so many examples and the debate, right? So then this is a Chita Madera saying, you know, example, like mind can see mind, same as like, so someone has a clever voice, like someone meditate, the person see the other's mind, so then why you cannot see your mind? So that's it. Okay. Chita Madera, this ask question to my Yaminka. My Yaminka say no, something, you know, very far away, you can see, but something too close, you cannot see. Same as like your eye, see, I can see very far away, cannot see your face. So that's kind of, you know, debating. It's uh, the main point is just the mind, if mind permanent, it's mind is permanent, it doesn't work very well, anything. Okay. Okay. Your mind is except emptiness, then can be, you know, you say you see your own natural mind. Actually, it's seeing means you nothing seeing, that is a seeing. So it's permanent, then you cannot see. Permanent cannot see permanent. Okay. Next is a uh, Debbie B. Can you do next one? <laughs> Sorry for the delay. Hang on. Um, okay, sure. I'm sorry, I was just sat down. Where are we at? Mary, where did you finish? What is it, the 22nd? 22nd? No, sort of. 24, 24 I finished. Okay, yeah, okay. I, okay. I did Chet, Chita Mantra and Mahamika, so you're on right after that. Okay, so uh, Chita Mantra, 24. If someone with the necessary Causal conditions such as concentrate. Oh, that's yeah. the one I did. Oh, okay. It's the one right. It. <laughs> okay, 26. Tita Matran. These illusion like objects are not ex external objects rather than the mind. Yet, although not often, they cannot be considered as being the mind itself. Thus, they are phenomena which are indescribably other than the mind. And um, so let me. Can you do the 25 versus 25? Ma, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Ma, ma, ma. Okay, the mere appearances of seeing, hearing, and perceiving are not being negated here. It no. is the. Right under 24, Chittamatra, if self cognition were non existent. Oh, I see many of you didn't do that one, right? No. 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 Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not going to do very well with this verse either. <laughs> I can't even find it, let alone know what it is. Okay. Chittamatra. Here we go. If self-cognition were non-existent, other cognitions would also be non-existent. Therefore, there would be no such things as seeing, hearing, and so forth. Okay, so that's 24. I do, uh, and, and then I'll, I'll do that one and then the, the reply from Madhyamaka. Uh, the subject is mind uh, object or mind is permanent and um, the causal condition is you can see when put in the eye very far and under the ground. So again, it's kind of going back to 
that earlier one where the uh, mantras could do these things where they could see very far and look under the ground. And therefore, um, so the Chittimantrans are saying, therefore, this must be possible. And if this person can have these special powers, uh, why can't they see their own mind? Um, so Kempo mentioned that we think like that too with our um, technology, like we can see with microscopes and see really teeny things, but yet we really um, can't see the mind. Uh, we can see the object, um, but if the mind could see like that, then why can't we see um, self or our mind? So that was the Chittimatra, and again, they were debating. And then the Madhyamaka, which is, say, um, again, going back to, I think, what uh, you were talking about, Ed, when I walked in, um, you, they can't see the eye lotion close to the eye, but can see other objects. So the Madhyamaka would say, you can see very far away, but can't see ourself. So we have to accept that mind is emptiness because we can see the mind um, not seeing. We can see the mind not seeing. Yes, Debbie, you finish? Uh-huh. Oh. I think so. Do, am I supposed to read more? You read the verses 24, 5, but explain is 24. Oh. 24, right? <laughs> no, I explained. I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, the mere appearance of seeing, hearing, and perceiving are not being negated here. It is yeah. the conception of them or truly existent that it is to be reversed since this is the cause for suffering. Okay, so the main point is that see, there's a chitta matter and the... Oh, okay, I have it here, Kempo. Um, they're, they're not debating that worldly things um, don't exist. Uh, the Madhyamaka isn't debating that worldly things don't exist, but what we see and hear are, are um, permanent. Uh, if we see and hear things and we permanently fixate and attach to them, we're not talking about the relative. You can have all of that, but the Madhyamaka is saying that the realities, these things really don't actually exist. Is that what you is that it? The Chitta matter is just a self discognition. See, minds not exist, but then we cannot have a relative truth. Right. He said, I'm not, you know, negated to them, let's say, this uh, relative truth. But it's, uh, the main point is that your mind is a permanent exist. Then you think it's all this phenomenon as a permanent exist, but then you will have a fixation to that. Mm -hmm. you that. You are not free from suffering. So that's why I'm telling that the reality of the phenomena. The reality of phenomena is Maya Mika says all is emptiness, nothing is permanent exist. Right, that they don't exist. Yeah. So I explained the correct one finally. I am so sorry, everyone, to take up your time. I've explained all of them. <laughs> so mm -hmm. far. The, no, the numbering is really confusing. It's... It is very confusing. Yes, I agree. Thank you, Ed, for that supportive note. <laughs> that is a confusing, but it's one is where it's very easy. The root text didn't have this. Uh, uh, you know, question. So this, uh, in, you know, translation, he put the question is in the root text. Actually, the question is like the, not directly showing, but the commentary has this all questions, but the root text didn't have this question. So now it's this, you know, root text, this translator has portions so then we understand what the chitta matter of saying so the chitta matter of view is the same as our thoughts usually so we think if mind is permanently no exist then how can we have this samsara how can we have this all relative truth so then my amiga say no if mind is uh, uh, 
you know, actually my amiga say he not debating with this samsara. Samsara is like, what do you hear? What do you see? Just, just live it like that. But he talking about the reality, actually the mind permanent not exist. And if this all object phenomena exist, then uh, we cannot free from samsara because it's like we stuck that samsara that there, this phenomena is no exist. That's why it's you are, the, the, it is the conception of them as truly existing that is to be reversed in the sense of this is the case of the suffering. So you recognize me from this, that this phenomena is no exist, no permanently inherently exist. That helps you no fixation to the object. So you recognize you no fixation to the object that you are free from suffering. Uh, so then Chitta Matering again, 26. This one, uh, Amanda, can you do the 26 versus 26? Yes. Uh, Chitta Matering, these illusion-like objects are not external objects other than the mind. Yet, although not other, they cannot be considered as mind. They cannot uh, be considered as being the mind itself. This they are phenomena which are indescribably other than the mind. And the Madhyamaka response is, if something is a thing, how can it be neither the mind nor other than it? It has to be one or the other. But if you say that it is neither one nor the other, then it would not be a thing because such a thing could not possibly exist. Um, so the Chittamatrans are saying that mind is permanent and ob the objects are delusion. Uh, and that they're somehow one together. And the Madhyamaka response is um, the object is, is not mind. Uh, if the object is, is not mind, then it cannot exist. Um, I don't really have a lot on this one. Um, I have that the Chita Madarans are losing the debate and they won't give up. <laughs> um, I think I could probably use a little bit more help on this one if someone wants to help. Okay. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. The, uh, the 26, this illusion, like objects are not external objects other than the mind. So this Chita Madhya, if they say that, right? If the object is not other than mind, that means the object is the mind. Yet, although not other, but the, the, the Object is no other than mind, they cannot be considered as being the mind itself. The object that cannot be mind. So that's the Chitta Matilda all saying that the already contradiction to the same. Because there's a mind, object is there's a it's a mind, but it's not mind. It cannot be mind too. So the Itself, thus, there are phenomena which are indescribably other than the mind. Then my amica giving up the you know, answer is if something is a thing, how can it be neither the mind nor other than it? So the object is your receptor is a mind or not mind? That's my amica asking question then it has to be one or, or the other. So you must be another one or other, you know. You have to accept your this appearance phenomena is your mind or not mind. So you have to accept either one. Uh, other. But if you say that it is neither one nor neither one nor the one not the other, then it would not be a thing because such a thing could not possibly exist. So anyway, whatever you accept then become uh, if the your mind is the same as the object, the object is you say it's a delusion, so become your mind is okay not being self permanent, it's become a delusion, then the object is the same. If the other then self-consciousness is permanent, other, you know, is not exist. So 
the phenomena of division that exist within the separate. If it's happening like that, uh, then if Sutta Matavain has only minds, you know, self permanent, but no any other object. Because uh, Sutta Matavain, you know, minds and object is, they said, separate, different. So their minds are permanent. Object is a no exist. It's a delusion. Uh, if they say that, then also they can see because of such things could not possible exist. Then neither is exist. Uh, so now we go to the twenty six. Kempo, your vo voice is breaking up a little bit. For me, I don't know. And is other people having a little trouble? Is it kind of breaking up? Alex, yeah. yes. Alex, yes. You're you're really far away, it sounds like. Yeah. So now what do we do then? Uh, no, it's okay. Okay. I think more of that. That's uh, internet. I think you just Kempo. need to be closer to the mic. Okay. That's better. We're we're hanging on every word. So when we miss one, it's not so good. <laughs> okay. Before we go to the verses 26 again. This verses 26 is a little bit confused, but actually just uh, not that confused again. Just one way you really simple way understand. Another way you put this complicated too. This all is like that, the main point. Uh, so, Chita Matarin, see verses 26, Chita Matarin, their thing is a, um, so, see, mind is a self permanent, and the object is delusion, same as illusory. Uh, so, no, this verses is a, uh, my Yaminka and uh, Chita Matarin debating, is like, my Yaminka asks Chita Matarin, the your mind, self conscious, permanent, and illusory object is the same or different. If the same, then your mind also cannot be exist because the same is the object is delusion. Same is become object is delusion. Mind also cannot be exist too. Right? Then, uh, if the separate. Then this uh, appearance is not come from mind because appearance is like just this uh, delusion, no exist. Mind is a permanent itself. So no related to each other become subject and object. Then you cannot say like this form is apart to mind. So anyway, is your mind is like become useless. It's no exist. See, same is the object. So that's the Mayaminka, you know, uh, pushing the Chita Matter in there. This two, verses 26. Then we go to verses 27. Okay, I'll go follow this one. Uh, verses 27 is uh, uh, the Chita Matter in, say, telling the Mayaminka, debating. So if you understanding all this phenomena as emptiness, what are you going to get benefits? Yeah, the reason is, uh, you know, some, some, uh, some people know how to create the illusion object, but the person is still attached to the object too. So even you know that this uh, phenomena is impermanent, phenomena is emptiness, but still you have fixation, still you have attachment object. So it's nothing going to get benefit for you. So that's the Chitta Madhira saying here. Just as in the Chitta Madhira system, illusion like object are not truly existing, but can still be seen. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, this is the different one. Uh, this is the coming one. Is, uh, I did it also mistake. Just as in the Chitta Materi system, 
illusion like objects are not truly existing. That that chitta matter saying, but can still be still be seeing the illusion is is no exist still permanent mind can see that illusion. Similarly, although the mind is not truly existing, uh, conventionally it can appear as the beholder. Okay, so the main point is that this is the stir Maya Minkas explain. Uh, so Maya Minka telling Chitta Matira, you're saying this uh, object is illusory, no exist, uh, but still your mind can see. Uh, same like that, although mind is not truly existing, conventional, it can appear as the beholder. So mind also impermanent, still mind can see the object. So the main point is uh, Chitta Matara and Maya Yaminka, you know, Chitta Matara just accept the permanent mind and then they say auto phenomena object is delusion. So that's delusion is like appear to mind, come from mind. So then see that is the problem. So Maya Yaminka say your mind is permanent, cannot appear to the object you know, these uh, delusions, because permanent mind you know, projecting this delusion object. And uh, if the delusion object and the mind is the same, then become your mind also same as the delusion object, impermanent. So that means actually your mind and uh, your delusion object both are no exist. If uh, same is like your delusion object no exist, it can be the object. But same thing, your mind also no exist. The mind can see the object. So that's the Maya Minka view. And then Chitta Matarin, cyclic existence, the state in which subject and object appear as to substantially instinct things uh, has as the basis of its deceptive appearance, something real. Uh, namely a uh, truly existing known dual consciousness otherwise if it did not have something rare as its basis so it would would be just like space and would not be a state which could appear as a rare subject and object uh, well here is the chitta material talking about uh, this all the relative truth must have something based on truth or something. Otherwise, all this relative phenomena is like same as the space. You cannot see anything. If no any like source permanent. So that's the reason Chitta Matarain said the self, self consciousness is the permanent source of all this relative phenomena. So if self consciousness it's no exist permanent, then you don't have this relative truth. Then become same as the space. Nothing is exist for you. So that's the, you know, Chitta Matarain telling the Maya Minka. And uh, then Maya Minka give answer is uh, 28, verses 28. So verses 28 is if the dualistic state of a cyclic existing depending upon something real so this dualistic you know state of a samsara samsara is a depending on something real for like your self consciousness then how could it have the function of appearing as a real subject and object so samsara is the source is a permanent self consciousness then how can have you have this uh, appearance and uh, rare exist the subject and object? How can have? So is Maya Minka give answer to the Chitta Matarain? It would follow that it could not because rare truly existing things did not exist. So Maya Minka said, it's not possible, you know, like source is a permanent and then you can have a subject object, so it's not possible. Uh, the the reason is like appearance or this samsara is a delusion. Source is permanent. That 
cannot be contradicting like that, you know. Source permanent cannot, cannot uh, projecting this uh, samsara delusion. If this, this, this source consciousness, you know, projecting this samsara delusion, then your consciousness also cannot be permanent. Permanent cannot projecting all this uh, samsara, you know, the relatively true delusion cannot project. Uh, that's, this two cannot go together because the permanent cannot projecting delusion samsara. Or mind also delusion, then you can, you know, mind delusion can projecting delusion samsara, that's okay. But self-consciousness permanent cannot projecting delusion, you know, this is samsara. So that's the problems there. Is uh, then Chita Madhira say, how can this samsara is come from? If they don't have a permanent source, then my Yamika say, it's mine is a delusion. So mind delusion projecting samsara delusion. It's, then you can say it's all object is come from mind. This is, it's no problem there. But self-consciousness permanent, you accept that this is all source of samsara. Then this self-consciousness permanent cannot project the samsara because the samsara is a delusion. You know, the Chitta material also accept that. Yeah. Uh, so then you think about this all go to the not only Chitta material problem, this problem is our like we think is all this samsara is come from something source permanent. And we have that thought, and all these other religion has these thoughts too, everyone mostly. See, some is like the source permanent is like part of particles. And some religions accept like this or some sara is a source of permanent gods, permanent gods. Then different kind of that accept, you know, different kind of gods. Uh, so some say source is a mind permanent, some say like God is a permanent projecting all this is creator. So that kind of all these different religions are stuck with the extreme, two extremes. This is like uh, nihilism, another is how to call nihilism and internal, internalism. All. So this is internalism. This all religion is internalism. Mm -hmm. They're accepting something permanent, source. E eternalism? Is it? Yeah, eternalism. Materialism? Eternalism. Eternalism. Eternity. Eternal. Eternal. Eternalism. Everlasting. Permanent. Yeah, eternalism. Net nihilism, right? So eternalism, nihilism, two things here. So this, uh, so far, all this uh, Buddhist, like Chitta Materin and uh, Vabashika, Satantrika, they're all part of an eternalism, right? Eternalism. So the except the permanent. Uh, so then all known Buddhism, one no Buddhist is like nihilism. Other, all this religion is internalism. The accepted permanent from all this conceptual. And uh, Mayamika don't accept anything permanent source. That's the reason Mayamika is free from two extremes. They don't accept nihilism, they don't accept internalism. They're free from both. So no. If I have a question. <clears throat> the uh, Chitamatrans, they sound very similar to the um, non-dualistic Vedanta, the Hindu notion of uh, self, mind. Mm. 
Okay, so other religions are coming the following next time. So we can talk in the other part. Uh, so then where we are, Sigma existence be million. So now we are the 30, right? Where is it 30? 29, yeah? yeah. 29, yes. Oh. So if it were true that in this way, mind existed separately from its object. So now see that your mind has become free from object because object is a delusion. Your mind is a self-permanent consciousness. It's become not related to any each other. So then your mind is a permanent self-consciousness free from object. Then all sentient beings would be become tatangatas. Then your see your mind is free from object. Only mind self is there. So no any like delusions. That means like so always become Buddha for you. You know means like this. My Yamika telling the Cheta material. Then become everyone is Buddha because uh, don't have to follow the path. The reason is see. Uh, your mind is not related to the object and the self-consciousness is permanent and the known door there. So then it's always become Buddha. So you don't have to follow by all the path to purify karma. Therefore, what advantage is there in considering the basis of a secular existence to be merely mind? Then, then that's the reason just uh, uh, therefore what advantage is there in in considering the basis of a secular existing be merely mind, then why you, your or the just your view is you try to approving, that is all like what is value there? Nothing, nothing you know like really, any what you saying, and what your goal is you know no same. So then it's your try to approving is like no valued. So Maya Mika said, no value, you try to approve it. The, the main point, the Chita Madera try to approve the permanent self mind. They cannot approve that. So, so then see if the approving that, then the problem is like object and the consciousness is not related to each other. So if happening that, then Chita Madara cannot follow the path, cannot purify karma, or must be everyone is Buddha. So that's the Mayamika uh, answer. And then also, establishing as the path, the knowledge that deceptive truths are like illusions. Uh, this is the path, debating with the path. Even if one knows that all phenomena are like in illusion, who were disturbing conception be turned away? See, the main point of this uh, also, Chita Matara asked questions for my Yamika. So, even if one knows, means like if we know uh, that all phenomena are like in illusion. If we know that all this phenomena is delusion, emptiness, impermanent, who were disturbing conceptions that be turned away? How can be, you know, subdued our emotions? How can we can subdued our emotions? So even you know that still you have emotion, your emotions cannot go away, then what is the benefit? So let's ask question to the Maya Minka. There Chita Madera giving examples. For instance, a magician who creates an illusory woman can still have desire for her. So they, who can create this, uh, you know, magician, magician who can create the illusory woman, but the person is attached to that object. The person actually knows that is not real but stay attached to the object. So same is like, you know, we attach to the picture, movie, and whatever we watch something, you know, delusional, we attach to the object. Even we know that it's not real. 
So our goal is we wanted to reduce our emotional attachment desires. So that's why we using this practicing and understanding all this phenomena is impermanent, delusion, emptiness. So Chita Marira said, if you know that, but still your emotions cannot be go away, stay there. Then same is like these examples. So the answer, my Yaminka give answer, the, cre the creator of this illusion has not abandoned the tendency of the disturbing conception of desire towards knowing entities such as a woman. So see who create this illusion things. The person has a emotion. So that's why there, even the knowledge that this object is illusory, but still they have this emotion is arising. The why is the emotions arising? Because they don't have habitual to meditate emptiness. So long as you have meditated habitual and emptiness, if that is you have it strong and strong, then you can reduce your emotion and uh, purify karma, of course, reduce our emotion, get rid of all the root of our self grasping. Uh, the, if we don't have that enough habit to add, then still this emotion is arising. So that's why Maya Minka here says, therefore, when he, when he sees this illustrious woman, the tendency to see her emptiness is very weak. So that person didn't have a re recognized emptiness. They don't have a realization of emptiness. That's why the person seeing this is see movie or pictures or illusory things stir the person's uh, uh, the even the nose illusory but stay attached to that object because they don't have a meditation emptiness they don't have a habit to add emptiness although the illusion may be understood to be empty of being a rare woman through not understanding phenomena to be empty of true existence, the tendency of desire arose. Uh, so this person say, although the illusion may be understood, the person understand is an illusion to be empty of being a rare woman, through no understanding phenomena to be empty of true existence. That person didn't have understanding or this phenomena is emptiness. That's the reason the tendency of desire are arose, like have, have desires to object. So the main point is, if you know first this all phenomena is impermanent, delusion, emptiness, that's first we have to learn through the intellectual and then we have to cultivate and then you go to practice and meditate and you become gain, you know, like your mind is like adopting means like more uh, used to understanding like habitual emptiness again and again. So that helps then reduce the desire attachment. Uh, you can free from attachment. This uh, who create illusion things, that person actually didn't have realized anything about emptiness. That's why even the notes like, you know, this uh, create movie or whatever these delusion things, they stay attached to the object. So no, the, see, up there first, like this 31 is like, we don't have enough habitual emptiness. That's why this, uh, our emotion is kind of stopped. Uh, so this 32 is like, if you habituate, meditate emptiness, then you, you realize emptiness is become you less fixation to the object. 
of fixation is become like reduce, reduce. And one day you realize then all is emptiness, like you don't have fixation to object. That time then we are not stuck with the object, attached to the object, free from our mind. So that's all, uh, you know, result or benefits is come from the meditation emptiness. This morning I share with you, you see, other meditations can reduce only our self-grasping and attachment desires, but they cannot really remove root causes of samsara, you know, the self-grasping. Uh, if you meditate, love, compassion, they're not directly introduced to self-grasping. So love, compassion, meditation is the same as in this light. So purify the darkness in this room. And uh, emptiness meditation is the same as the sun. So then all the like darkness go away, sunshine, like that. You know, it's the power is like that difference is. The, for us, like emptiness is like talk about, uh, you know, hearing, practicing easy day emptiness because it's the first step. We don't have the, you know, uh, realize emptiness, of course, like we don't have even small, like not much habitual emptiness. Even you don't hear maybe emptiness much before. So we are reborn samsara many lifetimes. We didn't hear about emptiness. If we hear the emptiness, if we cultivate and practice meditate emptiness before previous lifetimes, we no start here right now. So that's the power, see the kind of power of emptiness. Nagazuna already told, you know, who heard emptiness teaching and someone has, who has dropped about emptiness, that person also one day can feel from samsara. So that can make imprints is very strong put into your mind. And emptiness is the, you know, like create in your mind, like this coming imprints, like one future lifetimes, like you can, the habit you arise, you meditate, practicing, and the, you know, self-grasping is so you can get rid of it. Then you can liberate. So now this is 32, uh, but through developing the tendency to know all phenomena as empty. See, if we, uh, through the developing, you know, habit you had uh, used to, in this phenomena is emptiness. The tendency of uh, apprehending things as truly existing will be abandoned. Then we understand that all this object is recognized emptiness. So the tendency of apprehending things as true existing will be abandoned. We, we abandoned uh, like fixations. True existence abandoned. And through familiarizing oneself, so we use meditate used to with the fact that no phenomena emptiness as well as deceptive truth are established as truly existing. In the future, the apprehension of emptiness as whereas first phenomena to be truly existing will be abandoned. At this time, it will be impossible for any disturbing conception to occur. Then not possible any emotion arise for our mind. So also, see we meditate, uh, this used to habituate uh, emptiness, then we realize nothing is truly existing. Truly existing is abandoned. Then we meditate more and no existing also abandoned too. No existing, no exist. So free from two extremes. See, these all religions stuck with 
exist or no exist, either one. That's why we have a nihilism and internalism. So my Yaminka is free from these two extremes. If free from two extremes, then they actually also don't have a middle way, means like in the center. So center cannot have, because you don't have two edges, then how can you have a center? Center also no exist too. So some people think my Yaminka is middle way, means like relatively okay, we say middle way, but actually the middle way that is a, is the not correct words that is a usually is a gelu tradition talk about the middle way means the center the tsongkhapa he, he talk about this middle way is like free from two extreme and middle middle way means center so something like that but it's other like in tibetan other languages no one except that way so so just think about uh, two edges no exist. Then how can you have a center? Center is not possible there. So free from all the conceptuals. Mm. So now go to the 33. Uh, when it is said that nothing exists, this means that things to be neg negated. It is said that nothing, oh, sorry, negated true existing, which is under examination, is not to be apprehended. At this time, since true existence, the basis in dependence upon which no true existence is post posted, is removed. So no, see, we talk about this two extreme, free from two extreme, when it is said that nothing exists, right? Nothing exists permanently, inherently, nothing exists. This object, this means that the things to be negated, mm, true existing, which is under examining is not to be apprehended. So this all existing things no, no permanently exist. This delusion things no exist permanently. At that time, since true existence, the basis in depending upon which no, no true existing is posted, is removed. No existing also removed. So existing things no exist. Then no exist also removed. Like same as like if no birth, then don't have a death. So this is like go up to them. I told you the Maya Minka, Tibetan Buddhism there, no Tibetan Buddhism in India, they all actually during the Nagarjuna time. He has two disciples, Nagarjuna. They follow both a little bit different ways. So then they, they have two different Mayaminkas, Uma Tanjurpa and Ranjupa. So Ranjupa is a follow two steps. Means like relative truly exist, absolute truly not exist. So that is Ranjupa. Tanjurpa means I'm beginning last time this all phenomena is not exist. So that is called Uma Tanjorpa. This, uh, uh, my, this Shanti Deva is Uma Tanjorpa means like he teaching this one, it's like I'm beginning last time this phenomena is not exist. Something exists in the relatively, then when you realize non exist, actually that is incorrect you realize distro or this phenomena object. You know, if this relatively exists, when you realize absolute truly they no exist, that means like your realization distro or this, this relative truth. So your realization same is the hammer. 
And the relative truth is the same as this cup, you know, hammer, destroy the cup, same like that become. But that is no case. And uh, we, this uh, Maya Minka, Uma Tanjorpa, I don't know how to this use the Sanskrit. This is the highest level. This cup is uh, no exist on beginning last time. So then just we recognize that is this is no exist, no exist on beginning last time. It's this cup is exist in relatively, then when we realize this cup is no exist, when absolute truth realize the cup is no exist. So that means like you exist is become your realization, get out, get out, how to say like destroy kind of. Then that means like you have first, then become normal. So if like that follow, then you have a norm exist. But never ever have a beginning less time exist, then you don't have a norm exist. If you relatively have the realization absolute truth is gone, then actually you have no exist, but no exist you have. Okay, so the main point here, then how can no truly existing remain before the mind as truly existing? Just as the sound of a barren warming does not exist, neither does his die. So that's a perfect example. Whatever we talked to here is this example, just clearly understand, right? The sun is never born never ever born like that, this phenomena is never ever exist. Not in the relatively exist. Never ever exist, I'm beginning this time. Then how can, when you get realization, is, is this is no exist. So science never born, never die. Uh, so now next one, so this is versus is the most important we talked, 34. Also when you meditate, you have to chant these verses. I told you this morning, the Shanti Deva, when he get these verses and then he flew away and disappeared. So up to here, he talked teaching, but after this all is he just wrote down and leave his, his cabin and the silent selling. So he said this, then he's disappeared. Once neither a thing nor a no thing, it is emptiness, remains before the mind, then as there is no other alternative, such as something being both a thing and a nothing, or being neither or thing nor a no thing, no thing. Finally, the mind that apprehends the truly existing object will cease and be totally pacified. All this phenomena, uh, you know, uh, once neither uh, things nor uh, nothing, its emptiness remains before the mind. So it's all like exist, no exist, nothing is remained in your mind, free from extremes. Your mind is free from extremes. Then no any other than that absolute truth means. So that time then you really pacified, you know, here is like ceases and be totally pacified truly existing object where CC and be totally pacified. So you have to read this more again and again, these verses. And also good things like when you meditate, you chant these verses, it's very good. Free from your minds or the conceptual thoughts and free from dualistic, free from all these extremes. Uh, so no question. So that is like all the debating with the path. Uh, so no, this is a debating with the result. Question, if there were the case, then because he would not 
reflect, I shall do this. How could the Buddha act for the benefit of others? So if it's like this, so then see verses 24 like this, become how can Buddha benefit for other beings? So Buddha is not like not connect with other sentient beings. So then if not connect with other beings, how can Buddha can benefit other sentient beings? So my young, this Shanti Deva said, they don't have like actually motivatedly Buddha connect with other beings, but the, he has already aspiration. So this aspiration is always remain. And that is benefit other beings. So answer is, uh, this is example, which fulfilling trees and which, which granting gems, although they have no conceptual motivations, completely forfeit hopes because of their own power and the merit accumulated by people. See, this is a, someone create. Uh, so who has accumulation merit and who has something, you know, aspiration is like completion. So that kind of people create this object, their own power and their merits accumulated by people. Likewise, through the force of both the purity of the disciples, minds and the prayers of Buddha makes to work for the welfare while he is a Bodhisattva, the physical body will conquer effort and the benefit is uh, forthcoming. So these things like see someone who has a strong like aspiration, who create accumulation merit and who has accumulation merit and who uh, already completing aspiration. So that kind of people use the mantra prayers, something, you know, like power of the, the, the realization use, create some object. This object is benefit, but actually this object didn't have any motivation to want to benefit, but it naturally benefit for others, long as the all condition comes. So same like that Buddha benefit other beings and when he was on the path, so he created all this accumulation merit, and he already did this aspiration, and that aspiration is accomplished. So now that aspiration is like, same is like this wish for feeling jewels, treasure things, like, you know, same like that, the Buddha benefit others. So see, Buddha passed away, and he has many relics, and the special object, you know, this all the teachings, that's power benefit others. And that's why we create a stupa, we have statues, so this all comes great. And we put all this power object inside there, then people who do the second mumblet, who do the prayers, and who pray and wishings, they also, they you know, uh, benefit. So that's always a power, but actually Stupa didn't have also an intention too. But same is wish for feeling givers, Stupa is, that Stupa benefit others. And... Uh, uh, isn't there a lot of ways to do that to benefit others? Caution, so then another caution. Uh, the prayer of the Bodhisattva uh, sees when he attains Buddhahood, wouldn't it be impossible for them to have any effort at that time? That is uh, the question. And the answer is, uh, for example, although the... Uh, I think but, we simple. Uh, yeah. Am I wrong? But I think we stopped there. This no, no, I did this one too. Okay. I did this another 30, finish 37 verses. Yeah, that's what I got. We did 37. Yeah, yeah. I, 
Nepal. For example, although the Burman Sanku passed away a long time ago, ago the Garuda reliquary, which he consecrated with the force of his mantra, is still able to natural naturalize hogans. So this is a person who created this uh, called Garuda and the special something. So he had the names, you know, consecrate, he consecrated that. So the same is like the stupa, you know, that just means like, uh, then that person is a pathway, but still this benefit for others. Uh, the, the, this, uh, he created this, uh, you know, Garuda reliquary, uh, which he consecrated that stair helps for remove the poison. Uh, so that's the power of this uh, aspiration, prayer. Uh, so person is the pathway, but still the benefit is there. So similarly, the same like that, the reliquary of a conqueror's body is formed in accordance with his actions and the prayers when he was a Bodhisattva, although the Bodhisattva has no path beyond sorrow into the known abiding nirvana. So Buddha is already Bodhisattva's pathway, but his conceptual desire to accomplish the welfare of others has ceased. He still accomplished all that is of benefit for them. So still this Buddha's benefit for them and uh, naturally benefit for them. So even no effort, effort, no need effort, no need motivation, something to want to do something that still benefit. So the same is the sun, same is the rain, you know, the rain didn't have, you know, like motivation and anything wanted to benefit, but rain comes benefit many beings. And the sun didn't have a motivation, wanted to benefit, but sun's chance benefit many beings. So like that Buddha's aspiration is no feelings, no perception, no like agenda and no any uh, effort, nothing there, but it's all is like his power of aspiration is naturally benefit for others. So that's the two night finish there teaching. I get water in the air so hard. <laughs> okay, so no any questions? Does anyone so, have an actual book? What is your book? I'm wondering if anyone has the actual book. Um, Gail just, does, but she's not here right now. Okay, just just wanted to ask. Oh. So the mind. Is, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Please. Well, I I kind of forgot my question anyway. So. <laughs> okay, this is a this is a uh, a sudden a question, I guess. On on, uh, let's see here. With. What in in the Shakyamuni when we say yet in the perception of those to be guided, you go through the display of birth and death. Even so, let your form form body to continue always to appear. So, so I thought of that when we were talking about what 30, 30, what's thirty five, I think, right? Yes, yes. So what what are we really invoking? Buddha is still there, right? <laughs> yeah, that means like his uh, his blessing benefits is there. So this one is actually Shanti. They were debating with like someone who think is Buddha is passed away hundred percent, Nirvana. So then he telling debating with them still Buddha even passed away he benefit others. So that is uh, like see the prayer is the 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 truth. 
the really the Buddha is never passed away. So that's why when you practice saying Buddha is Buddha's effort to you means like it's no pathway. That's and what it, I wanted to hear. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. Physical form body is dissolved, but his wisdom or it's so that's why when you Calling the Buddha, Buddha is equal to you. So ordinary people think Buddha means like form body. Then you really understanding this absolute true emptiness. Buddha means not form body. Buddha means like you know wisdom. Buddha means like all this essence of like teachings, compassion, wisdom. This is all Buddha. Yes. What about the um, the Nirmanakaya form? So Nirmanakaya form, see Buddha is just uh, also the means like effort to form body again, Nirmanakaya form. Yeah, so Buddha Shakyamuni himself is Nirmanakaya form. But then Nirmanakaya form pass away from our mind but actually Buddha means Dharmakaya. Dharmakaya is always there. Never pass away, never, no birth, no death, Dharmakaya mean point is. This um, phrase, I, um, I just, once neither a thing nor a no thing, what it, what's that mean? Once neither a thing or a no thing, it's emptiness remains before the mind. Yes, it's uh, number 34, 34. You have this one, the confusion is like relative to the Buddha thinking or absolute to the Buddha thinking. And uh, this answer is something like given to like who has a perception of a relative truth. So some prayers are kind of about like Absolutely, Buddha, you know that prayer is writing. Some, some is like just relatively, you know, talking about, that's why two things there. Usually we talk about auto level, inner level, secret level. So we talk about auto level Buddha, inner level Buddha, secret level Buddha. Then which way, you know, your ask question, right? Your confused is like, Auto level, inner level, secret level difference, but that's why they sometimes talk about the inner level, we go back to auto level. So then that is become one of the common patterns. Can you, can you explain uh, how does emptiness get rid of self grasping? How does meditation on emptiness get rid of self grasping? So, self is to say, like you know means like permanent entity one exists so emptiness means that permanent entity one self is cannot be exist so that means like self is not exist then that's why i say that the contradiction there Sun and the dark, all these two contradict to each other. Because the sun is a dark, no, sun is a light, and the dark is these two is like contradiction. Heat and cold is a contradiction. So, heat and cold cannot be together. And the dark and the sun cannot be together. Same like that, the self and the permanent entity. I, you know, usually the thing is I am permanent I, that find the self, is emptiness as it cannot be together. So that's the truth, it's contradict each other. That's why it's when you realize the self is cannot be there. You realize it's like we realize that self is related to others based on 
objects, and it's not this, permanent. The dark, dark, you know, dark, you cannot see the object. It's a dark surface like that. Sun is the same as emptiness. When sun shines, then dark is cannot be there, right? You can see all the object. Dark cannot block the object. So like that, when you have a light. But, um, but if, if we realize that the, the self is not permanent, we still feel a self. Well, that is you didn't have realization. You have understanding, like kind of, if maybe you have intellectually, you understand, but no realization. That's why we have to study, contemplate, meditate, then you can get religion. So if we realize that it's it's not there, but it's but it appears though, right? It appears because of objects. No, no, you know so like you knowing and the realization is different. Oh. So you know, so like sunshine, like your house is become not going to be dark. It's all this like dark is go away. You know that a stress sun, no chance. Your knowing only cannot help you, right? Yeah. But if you're going somewhere on the road, the night time, so you know that so there comes sunshine. So you you know so always you can see the path, but the sun is you knowing that it doesn't help you seeing the path. It must have to sunshine. Huh. Yeah. Okay. So go back to Virginia's question here. We have another person question first. Yes. So, uh, building on what a question that was done before, when does the Buddha's um, benefits happen? It's when they're in physical form. Because oh. I understand there's physical, like realized humans, but oh. there's also there was Buddha prayers before the original Buddha. So my my question is, those prayers that remain here, like rain after they passed away, those were created before they passed away. No. The prayers, you mean? The benefits of realization, of enlightenment. Can you say again? Yes, so because it was in the context of question. Yes. That was on the verse of when it when someone passes away, their yes. the, the prayers, the benefits yes. don't pass away, they remain. Oh. So my question is the benefits to us sentient beings that realized enlightened beings have given us, they gave them to us in life or also after enlightenment. Mm -hmm. Okay, on the before enlightenment, the creed or this aspiration. Yes. Accumulation merit. Yes. So enlightenment means that they get completion that. Yes. So then you know body is there or body is not there, but anyway benefit for others. So those benefits were created during their lifetimes. Yes. Not after the enlightenment. Yes. After the enlightenment too? No, no, during before the enlightenment. So on the path or this creed this aspiration. So then when they become Buddha, they have all this power of completion at that time. So the aspiration once, is completion. They, they don't they, they don't they, they don't have to work effort but naturally benefit. You know, same is like person who make money, right? So go to work, make money very work very hard. One day you get something, you know, you investment, then you, yeah. you don't have to work, but you, you just investment, then that benefit for you, right? So like that, both of us like work so hard in the path, like want to benefit others. Use this, uh, you know, bodhicitta. Yeah, so they work so hard, use bodhicitta intention and benefit, try to benefit others, want to help others, they put effort. When they become Buddha, no need effort, benefit naturally. Yeah. They can they can benefit samsara even if they're out of it. Yes. Yeah. Even if there's no activity because it's effortless. Yeah, if it's effortlessly, benefit. effortless will benefit others. Good question. That's a, yeah. It's all the same. We have to work hard, you know, on the path. 
So one day you get result, it's like no need to do anything, just natural benefit. It's effortlessly. That that benefit is all the until samsara's end is remained. Is the benefit dualistic? Huh? A benefit is dualistic. Benefit dualistic. Who has a dualistic thought that they get benefits? Buddha's benefit true. Who has dualistic thoughts? But the notion of because yeah. how can he benefit other beings? He don't have no dualistic. He's free from dualistic. That's the reason he benefited for who has dualistic. If someone has dualistic each other, they cannot benefit each other much. It's limited. Mm -hmm. So someone benefit others means like have to get realization, no draw. Then you have a unlimited benefit others. Yeah, it's endless and effortless benefit. Someone is stuck in the dualistic, state, that benefit is limited. And uh, that benefit is also not effortless. You have to put effort to benefit others. So Buddha, while he has this power, benefit others effortlessly, unlimitedly, because it's no draw. Yeah. It's emptiness, so that's why. Main point is empty. Emptiness also, we cannot go back to nothingness. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nothing means that like you have this first, then someone take away from you, then it's called you have, it then become no. Right? If you don't have, never even have this book, then you didn't have no also, nothing also there. Yeah. No, someone take away from you. So that is emptiness means. So we never born nor die, right? Like that. Never exist, no no exist. So then you really learn this all the Maya Minka teachings. You see all everyone kind of like amazing alive, you know, all this condition comes. We can talk, we can see. And we can do everything, this all conditional advice, but then actually not really anything false permanently there. Then you really see the same things like same as like Mobi, <laughs> all these beings, everything. Where it comes from, where is it goes? Actually, not really comes from, it's nowhere it goes. It's just always a delusion arising. He says, like one day, example, like thousands of people gather in one place. Where is this come from? After like hours, like where they go, it's gone. Where they're gathering, so like that, you know, it comes, goes, so like nothing is exists today. Actually, no come from the no place to go, nothing go, nothing come from, nothing goes away. So that is the no, no exist, no, no, no exist. Okay, thank you, so, everyone. What, what, I have a question, Kempo. Well, actually, too, now that you brought that up, when when you get into thinking of the emptiness and the illusory uh, effect of the world, um, how do you make sure that you don't get into nihilism? Oh, you know that we're not falling into the nihilism? Yeah, I mean, you know, how do you take care not to fall into nihilism? As long as you... Believe the cause and the effect, and uh, drawing this uh, with wisdom with these other parameters, create generosity, you know, morality, practice patience. So then you know so you are no hellism. No hellism means like they don't accept the cause and the effect too. They don't, don't accept the future life, then it's that's it, it's everything's nothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. How come he doesn't um, make arguments against nihilism too? He's going after eternalism. You know, I wish he'd go after nihilism. You need a patient, okay, Curtis. Okay. Yeah, so first you learn everything, then you say, oh, why is not there? 
we not finish this book. <laughs> Did I have another question too, Kempo? You mentioned about you know really um, being able to study this and read about it. Do you, is your suggestion um, getting different commentaries and reading those? Is that how you know you said the first time you heard this, it was really like nothing could go in you know <laughs> so and then as you begin to listen and listen and read and study so is that a suggestion you would have for students as we're trying to um continue to follow these teachings yes yeah, so yeah i have to read and also good things like you have to study how completing this uh, wisdom chapter and then also go back to read again and then use other commentaries and only you focus this wisdom chapter again and again different commentaries then you really understand what the emptiness means so actually this is uh, where the buddhists are here as so like you learning everything all these different kind of religions too for buddhist philosophers and then go to all these non-buddhist religions or use learning So the here is like the another is a very short. That is like hard. One is good for us. Short is just you. If you go longer, one is maybe more get confused again, or take long time. Maybe you don't have time to do that. You know, maybe you don't have enough patience for that. So many reasons. Short is great too. So here has a very short information so this each different legends. Kempo, I uh... the things, like, see when he uh, verses today, we just read, told the uh, verses, uh, uh, this uh, 34 is very important, the 34. Then I told you this morning, the verses here has like 31, 32, 33, 34. So this, uh, this verses is a kind of essence of this, uh, uh, the wisdom chapter. So he giving this information, so like you also understanding this, he is the Maya Minka, the highest one because Shanti Deva don't accept even relative truth himself, but he only just followed by others' perception of relative truth. And he himself, he don't really accept relative truth exists. So his view is like, I'm beginning this time, all this, everything don't exist. Kempo, I didn't have any patience this afternoon and I read the rest of the chapter and I don't, I don't think I found any place where he went after nihilism, like he's gone after eternalism. It's somewhere it's there, so it's coming. Okay, thank you. I feel better. Okay. Maybe it seems... Right. I didn't read it, but we have here, it's still coming. It seems, Kempo, that it's also important to have a, develop an understanding of the schools of Buddhism, too. Um, because especially for this chapter, they're speaking from those um, qualities that each school possesses. Is that correct? Yes. So again, it's studying more about the schools. Maybe that's something you could teach us. <laughs> so first we finish this, then we can see. Okay. One last question. Sorry. Hmm. Um, can you give us any detail about when you were debating, uh, when you were in, in classes? Um, did, did you do some sort of debate with your fellow students? Yes, sir. Can you give us any detail on um, how you um, learned for the debate or what the subject matter was or something like that? Could you give any detail? From, it's really hard to explain. I cannot like really, you know, my English in, in, 
can't explain what we're doing. So okay. It's, it's, I don't have enough of that English. Sorry about it. That's fine. So usually in the theta, so just uh, we, whatever today talks topic that one hour, so like other, this student is like debating, you know? So they use this logics and like one is like be Chita Matri, one is be Maya Minka and then the debate. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so Marilyn, please pray. Can you put in the screen share? Tom Wazer, can you read the prayer, please? And Maho, in the center is the marvelous Buddha Amitabha of boundless light. On the right side is the Lord of great compassion. On the left is Vajrapani, the Lord of powerful means. All are surrounded by limitless Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Immeasurable peace and happiness is the blissful pure land of Dewa Chen. When I and all beings pass from samsara, may we be born there without taking samsaric rebirth. May I have the blessing of meeting Amitabha face to face by the power of the blessings of the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas of the Ten Directions. May we attain this aspiration without hindrance. Tayata Bensadriya Aya Bodha Naya Soha. Bodhicitta, the excellent and precious mind, where it is unborn, may it arise, where it is born, may it not decline, but ever increase higher and higher. By this virtue, may I achieve omniscience by defeating all enemies' confusion. May all who travel on the ways of birth, all age, sickness, and death cross the ocean of samsara. As Manjushri, the warrior, realized the ultimate state, and as did Samanta Bhajra, I will follow in their path and fully dedicate all the merit for all sentient beings. May the teachers of the great Jakunka Radhashri, as omniscient Lord of the Dharma, Master of Interdependence, continue and increase his study, practice, contemplation, and meditation until, until the end of samsara. Thank you, Kempo. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kempo. Really Thank you. See you tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.